Hello. In this video, we're going to talk about a topic that's near and dear to my heart, and that is finishing the Newton homework assignments on time. Uh, so I consider the Newton homework assignments the heart and soul of uh, what you learn in the course, and how well you do on Newton and how much you master Newton will definitely translate into how successful you are in the entire course. So if you can get to 100% mastery on all of the homework assignments before the due dates, uh, that is usually a wonderful indicator that you will finish the course successfully. And so my goal is for every single student to do that. So let's talk about how we can do that. Uh, here is a layout of the entire course homework assignments. And Newton gives me, I don't think it gives you, which is odd because I would think that they would really want to give you more than they would want to give me the estimate for uh, the amount of time that you should spend on a particular assignment. Now, I will say that these estimates are based on all Newton students who take this statistics course and who work these particular problems. And so that isn't going to apply directly to Austin P students, but we'll translate it. Uh, so the Newton time estimate is for uh, the typical Newton student who is either in high school and so has just had Algebra 2 or is in college but is a traditional student which means they're 18 years old, they have an average ACT score of maybe about 26 um, and an average math ACT score of about 26 and they just got out of Algebra 2 a year or two ago from high school because uh, they just graduated from high school and if that describes you, if you are uh, you know, had a math ACT and an overall ACT of 26 and you um, just got out of high school and you're just entering college, if all of those things are true of you, then this is the category you need to be in. Uh, so I would look at the maximum to make sure you allow the maximum time. But if that doesn't describe you, which it doesn't describe the majority of Austin P students, especially Austin P at Fort Campbell students, then where we need to be is this column. Uh, so this column may give you a little more time than you need, um, or it may even give you a little less time than you need, but overall I think this is a pretty good estimate for Austin P at Fort Campbell students, and I would, recommending allowing, I would recommend allowing at least this much time for every single assignment. So in your Chapter 1, 4 hours is probably about enough. Um, in Chapter 2, Part 1, 5 hours, 5 and a half hours is probably about enough, uh, but Chapter 2, Part 2, this this is where the rubber meets the road right here. Um, chapter 2, Part 2, and Chapter 3, Part 1 is where you need to pay attention because um, you're, you're talking about a lot of time here. Eight hours is a lot of time for one homework assignment. Know that you don't have to do these all in one sitting, by the way. You can do some and then come back um, and, and close it even. Close the web browser, shut the computer down, um, and come back and it'll remember where you are in your objectives. And uh, then Chapter 3, Part 2, is even more so uh, a challenge. Uh, and then, then we kind of level out. I mean, these are all pretty much, um, this one's a little bit high, uh, but the rest are, you know, th uh, three to uh, five and a half hours. And so that's not, not too different from each other. Uh, so all of this told together, uh, if you're in this column, if you have uh, a really good math ACT score and composite ACT score and are fresh out of high school, um, then you're looking at a total amount of time of 24 hours for the Newton homework assignments. And that's going to be the majority of the course, more than 50% of your time in the course based on what students have told me in the past at the end of the course. 50% um, of your time or more will be spent on these Newton homework assignments. Um, so that's half of your work for the entire course. Um, if you are in this column, then half of your work for the entire course uh, will be 68 hours. And I would say that this 68 hours, I just went back and looked at the past few terms of both my online students and my face-to-face -face students, and 68 hours or less um, described the majority of students, majority of my students. So sometimes it described two-thirds of my students, sometimes it described three-fourths of my students. There was one term where every single student fell under uh, 68 total hours in Newton, um, but, uh, you know, sometimes it's just barely, barely more than half. Um, so I would say on average, uh, this describes two-thirds to three-fourths of my students is this 68 hours or fewer. Um, and then uh, this is only a tiny fraction of my students that get less than 24 hours. Um, so, you know, I would say most 
you know, the best description would be um, much closer to 68 than to 24. Um, and that's okay because Sachs says, and they are the people who tell us whether your degree is worth anything from Austin P or not, so they tell us whether we're allowed to be accredited or not. And what that means is when people go to hire you, they're going to ask you if you have a degree from an accredited university. So maintaining our accreditation is the most important thing that Austin P State University does. Um, and so this is non-trivial right here. They tell us, they dictate to us that a three credit hour course must have um, this amount of time to complete the course. Um, we must have assignments and face-to-face -face instruction or online instruction that add together so that every student is spending um, between 112 and a half hours and 150 hours total for the entire course. Uh, and like I said before, these Newton homework assignments are going to be about uh, half of your course altogether. Students usually spend uh, at least 50% of the time on their homework. So if you're doing 68 hours on average, then you are right in the middle of where Sachs tells us we need to be. So uh, this is the perfect amount of required material that we have in order to meet the minimum Sachs requirements and in order to keep your degree safe. Now, all of that said, especially if you're spending more than this column, but even if you're spending less than this column but you want to optimize your homework time, let me tell you how to do that. Um, and I, I tell this often, but I, I do want you to optimize your time for the course, um, whatever you're working on, but especially on homework, if you're working on the homework, your number one and your number two tools by far to save you time are your formula card and your calculator. And your formula card for the course, that right hand column has uh, shortcuts for the calculator. So you can go to that right hand column of the formula card and look down that column and see all the shortcuts that the calculator has. And they are shortcuts because you can cut your time in half or more on a lot of these assignments just by using the formula card and the calculator. Uh, your number three resource is going to be your lecture notes that you're going to take on the videos for the course. Uh, so, you know, watch the videos and write notes on top of your lecture notes, your printed lecture note slides, and that'll be your number three resource. Your number four resource, and this is going to be the textbook part, is going to be perfect if you have questions that are asking um, about terms that you're not familiar with, you can open up, I, my Kindle version of the textbook is my favorite version, you can open up the Kindle version and you can click that little search magnifying glass icon and search on the exact term that you want to know and it will list for you every single page that that term appears on. And you can see little previews so you can jump right to where it defines the term, which is usually the first time it's used, but sometimes the first time it's used is in like the table of contents or something like that. Um, and then, uh, I guess this should really be a separate uh, point, especially here for the homework, the Newton instruction. So the Newton instruction will pop up as you first start to do the materials, and you can choose to ignore it if you've already watched the lecture videos. But if you are struggling on an objective, I would absolutely go back and check out the Newton instruction because it gives you just-in-time learning um, catered to the objective that you are working on. So that is really good. And then if all of these fail, um, your last option is to message me. You can text me or send me a remind message. Uh, ideally, if it's for the homework, I would love to have a screenshot of the exact problem that you're working on. So if you can message me, remind me, text me a picture of the problem that you're working on, then I will message you back. Um, if I'm at the computer, it'll be pretty quick. If I'm not, it may be a few hours. But I will message you back um, a picture or a video or, or maybe just text on exactly what to do uh, to solve that problem in the most efficient way possible. In other words, using the calculator way, if there is a calculator way. Uh, so all of these tools will help save you time on your homework so that you won't be spending um, more than the 68 hours. That's our goal. Uh, so, Or that you'll be spending the least amount of time that you need to spend to really learn the material and be prepared when it comes time for those exams. So using all these tools, I hope that uh, you do really well in this course and succeed. Good luck.